Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick introduction for this episode um, because it was recorded differently than the others. This was a conversation with James Haley, who's an actor and comedian and filmmaker. And because his main focus is acting, I was asking him about um, what are the things that someone in my position can do to make a project as uh, rewarding and valuable as possible for actors like him. And uh, it, we started the conversation when uh, I was recording basically what was going to be my first episode ever. And then there was a number of things wrong with the episode, uh, like audio quality and just uh, my job as a host and some things that I need to work on. But uh, in the end, I decided to delete that episode and and revisit with it with him because... Um, regardless of the quality of the episode, I think it's a really important conversation. So you're going to hear the conversation uh, between us. We have a little bit of back and forth because um, we sort of have diff- you know, we have our different perspectives, you know, and um, I think it's a really healthy conversation. I guess just to set it up, um, one thing we talked about in the first conversation was the quality of the writing, you know, uh, for all characters. So I talked about how that's a big deal for me, where if someone's, if someone's working on one of my projects, even if let's say they're not getting paid, I still want them to feel like there is a somewhat unique opportunity to working with me. I want them to feel like, wow, like John put in the extra effort with this writing or this, whatever sort of storytelling we're doing. I want, you know, I want people to be excited about working with me and I want them to feel like it's going to be worth their time. And, um, yeah. And so we can, we, we continue this conversation and what you're about to hear, we we actually talk more about money, which I think is a really good thing. It's also something that I, want to talk about a lot on this podcast. I don't think this conversation is going to wrap it up at all. Um, it's something it's something that I can almost get a little paranoid about, especially when I listen back to this episode, because when I was younger and my focus was just on acting and singing, um, I had a very different view than I have now. And I've heard other people's views. Like, I... I, I I don't think everyone in the artistic world thinks the same way. Uh, But I know that there is a a range of views. And I know that there are people out there who I probably disagree with now. And um, I guess where the paranoia sits in is... um, I would hate for... Money, fortunately, has not... um, come between me and anyone I've worked with like it like that that hasn't been like a like a a big argument about money with anyone fortunately but I do fear that because I feel like that could get so messy so quick and uh to piggyback off of that um part of what I guess leads to that insecurity or being paranoid about the topic is I feel like The perspective I have now and the perspective not all actors have, but some have, is going to be very different. And so it's not only a question of what is fair, but it's also a question of what do we all believe is fair. And I think those are two different things. I'll talk more about it in the future, but for now, it's just, let's get into the episode. Here we are. I wanted to... um revisit our conversation and just because i kind of have some new thoughts anyway so this is actually a good good for us good and i think i think i do too there was a lot that i took from that conversation um primarily um towards the end we were kind of talking about our kind of different perspectives on i don't know like the actor's experience starting out versus the writer director experience starting out and how, you know, 
I was asking how someone in my position can make it the best possible situation for someone in your situation. You know, it, it was kind of like, and I think you... I have the answer. Okay. Let's start with that. What, what, what were your thoughts? So I think my original thoughts were, were pay for the time. But then I started realizing more human psychology and it kind of goes in any, um, sector uh what what drives a waiter to be the best waiter he is after he gets the job tips what drives um you know a a startup company who maybe is not paying that well um to get the best out of their employees stock options i think if i was hired and i loved the script um, or maybe if I didn't even like, what if, let's say I didn't like the script, but I was getting paid, you know, whatever the minimum is, it's not union. So I, there's no way it's going to get like re- no guarantee of release and there's no residuals. So I think if you offered some like piece of the pie, if it d- ever did make it big, that would drive that actor to bring the best out even more so out like it's just in the mind like no one is going to love this movie as much as you are so if you wanted the best out of them after they've gotten hired already a quote-unquote stock option like if this movie makes it big you get one percent of the entire uh profit share i'll be like well that's awesome because i don't care if i have one line in this i'm gonna work my ass off if if to make that every bit I can control of this movie to be the best that it is I can I I will get paid now and later on so that makes me think of some stuff because I have thought about that and there's a couple reasons why I haven't done that uh yet um I considered it for a couple things but then I ultimately decided against it because um number one it well it depends on a couple things if people are getting you know if people are getting paid and getting a percentage or they're not getting paid and but they're getting a percentage there's a couple different situations that could happen but i think the the main reason why i would be reluctant to do that at my current level is because of not the money, but because of the commitment to a whole bunch of things that I would be making. For example, let's say you and I did a short and I said, or a movie and I did that and it was, and it was a very small thing like, like, and we are working on a a little short film. So Mm -hmm. And it's a little different with you because <clears throat> you're such a close friend. But uh, assuming, I mean, it could be with, let's say it's just two people. Um, if I make that commitment to you, first of all, how is there accountability? So let's say I put it on YouTube and there's a million views. And let's say you don't know how much money it makes. Who Who's going to check it? Do I have to send you screenshots of my YouTube every month? every six months, once a year, is this, or how often do I have to pay you? Am I going to be paying you for the rest of my life? When I'm 75, do I, am I going to get a call? Hey, you haven't paid me in the last six months. How's the revenue doing on our short film? So Mm -hmm. for something like that, that sort of commitment to being like, oh, for the rest of my life, not only, not only did I put in all this work and finance it and blah, 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 blah but I'm also agreeing to be held accountable for the rest of my life. And I'm not delegating that task out to an accountant or something like that. And so whenever I think about what that would mean, I'm just like, God, that sounds awful. And especially for a scenario that probably won't happen because the chance of a small um, project where there aren't accountants and aren't people who can handle that. It's like, one in a thousand one in a million that it actually that situation happens and 
if it doesn't happen, what do I still, am I still held accountable? Do I still like 30 years from now, am I going to get a phone call? Hey, it must have made money by now. Like you got to prove it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Did you doctor the screen? You know, it just, to me, once I started thinking of it, it opens a can of worms. But the reason I ever started thinking of it is because I agree with your logic where, especially because it's an option that could lower upfront costs because there's, I have many thoughts on when it comes to money and who's putting up the money and how much people get should get paid. And I think that, just, and I, I think this way because, and I've seen a lot of people think this way, when you start out as an actor, you live in this reality where there's no money coming in or a singer or whatever, any sort of performer. You live in this reality where there's no coming in, no money coming in, and your relationship to that is that whoever is putting the thing together is not paying you as much as you would like. And, and unfortunately that person like becomes like the bad person because of that yeah. regardless, re but it's regardless of anything else that could be contributing to that situation. So, I mean, maybe there is no money coming in. It could be a situation where, like that person is not like they're not profiting off of you. They're not taking advantage of you. Maybe they're losing money because I've done projects where I've paid people a bunch of money and I lost money. And it's like and some of them, I don't know this. I'm not going to claim this about anyone. But just from what I've heard from actors and performers in general, there are people out there who always complain about money, who will be like, oh, I, this isn't a living wage. I'm not getting paid enough. And it's like. So it, it create it, there's this there's this weird real, reality at the bottom where you're in this indie world where sometimes you know the money focus turns into this problem that the producer has to solve and but I think sometimes it's not always fair and it's just kind of this it's kind of this messy thing where I don't always know what the answer is but one thing I try and do now is I try to be a little bit more transparent with the money side of things. So um, like that short film I did, <clears throat> a Super 8 short film I did with Johnny and my friend Abby, which uh, for people listening, it was shot on Super 8 specifically for a Super 8 film festival. And it was like, there was no editing allowed. It was like this crazy thing. But, and I asked them both to do it for free. I said, I'll buy you food. And I also had booze. And I had zero, and it was, I had zero um, guilt about that because I put in like, I think the last time I tabbed it all up, I put in like $500 into that project. Like, that was just money I burned. And it might've been a little mm -hmm. bit more than that, where it's like, I'm not making money off of this. You're all losing $0. I'm losing $500. We're all getting footage in our name. So it's like, that's one situation. I think it's just a tricky thing. And I wish yeah. we could figure it out because I feel like if there was like a way people could agree an ethical situation w that lowered costs where like in situations where it's like, okay, we're all going to put our best foot forward. Um, and like, and you know, we don't need a bunch of money because no one's like profiting off of us basically. Cause that's really what it comes down to is like, is someone taking advantage of someone else or are we all getting the same thing out of it? Like, I wish there was a clear solution. So, yeah, I do. I completely agree with everything you're saying. And I totally empathize with your, um, you know, uh, concerns uh, with giving, you know, a piece of the pie. I'm just going with the psychology. I work, I'm working with you because I trust you and I like you and, and you're one of my good friends. There has to be a certain level of trust because at some point an actor is going to be like, on set waiting 
hours will be going by and they're just like waiting and they're in their mind they're going to be thinking oh this, if they could just do my one line and i could be out of here and then as that as they're waiting their mind is rolling it's like man if i if this even goes off like this john's gonna get like super rich off of this and i'm just gonna get nothing of uh, you know a free dinner it's like why am i even doing this this is just a waste of time i could be doing something else i'm not saying i would do that I'm yeah. just saying it seems like that could be an get issue it. that you're having. And like I said, I don't have the solution. I just think you have to get lucky. I think you have to trust people because as an actor, I've heard so many times, this movie's going to be great over and over again. And the success rate is maybe less than 1%. So in an actor's mind, it's just like, oh, yeah, here he goes again. Um, just another actor or a director, movie maker who I don't know or trust. It's like, like I said, I know you and I trust you and I like your work. So I'm, I, there's that connection that I have to your work. And <laughs> unless you've been friends with them for a while, well, we've been friends for 18 years now. Uh it's then I just think you just have to be lucky and have to just weed out, you know, people. And, and, you know, kind of like, kind of like what you were saying earlier, you're you're working with people who are just starting out in acting. So the acting is probably not going to be that good, right? If they're just starting out in acting and you want some unexperienced actor, they're going to want to get paid. They're going to be want, want more than, you know, uh, someone who's never acted before. So again, you just got to get lucky. and I, I, I'm rambling, so I don't have any no, solutions. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you made me think of a couple things because, <clears throat> um, like, for one, that mentality to push back on it is, I, uh, it's kind of linked to, um. Like it's, it's like, you're saying two things at the same time where it's like, oh, I need, I need a piece of this thing that is more than likely not going to amount to anything. And so it's almost like, and that's why I think like, that's not even part of the prize. I don't like, it almost doesn't matter. Like the, the focus it's almost worthless to have that be part of the focus or maybe it just puts your mind at ease where it's like, Oh, they're thinking about me. They got, and, and to be fair, I think that is something I would consider for certain individuals. If, if I was on a big enough project where I could delegate that thing out to someone else, because if it's some small thing where it's like, I'm posting this on YouTube and I'm going to be responsible for the rest of my life to send you screenshots and like, you know, like, no, not, I'd rather just pay you an extra whatever and just call it a day. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, it's like the the big reality with independent projects, in my opinion, is that people are doing it for the resume credit but also more importantly, the footage, right? And that is, I believe that that's worth a lot of money. I mean, something that was really eye-opening to me was like, I have known people who do these classes where it's like, they're paying money to do film classes that they get footage at at the end of it so they can use that to submit. Yeah, they pay like $1,000 for it too. Oh, I didn't know. Well, I'm, I guess I'm not surprised. I've heard people pay less, but even so, it's still like that footage you're getting, like if, if it's high quality, like that is worth, I think that's really what this is all about. It's you're building professional relationships and you're getting footage of yourself to show off your talents to both your peers and prospective professionals that you could work with. And that's the same reason why I do the stuff I'm doing. Sure, there's like a chance that something could pop off, like, but I just don't, I also just don't see that happening. That And that has factored into the way I structure things because it's like, okay, I, you know, when I first did um, my short film for non-ec, like I structured it thinking 
I'm going to figure out a way to make money off of this. And that, that's why I paid people how much I did because it was like, well, I got to pay them X amount because I'm going to be profiting off of this. And that's what is ethical. Like, and then the reality of it was just so incredibly different where, I mean, like that short film cost me like on paper, it cost me about six grand. Real life. Off, in real life, it probably cost me about eight grand. Mm -hmm. total revenue to date in the last like what, three or four years like a hundred bucks literally yep. a maybe less and yep. if you think uh, and this is i'm gonna be sounding like i'm talking a little shit but this is just the reality when you um you look at and the other <laughs> here's the other thing the focus is uh, like and we're talking about actors but the other thing is these conversations also don't ever involve crew the crew is there even more than the cast. But the but if you look at the days, it's like the cast were there for, even those dollar amounts in mind, it's like the cast were there between one and three days, each of them. Granted, they also, there was like a little bit of rehearsal. I'm sure they spent time on their own to prepare and stuff. So I'm not good. I don't want to negate that. But then you also look at the, the crew who was there every day so i think three to four days each of them plus the crew was also involved in pre-production and post-production because i was doing all my script edits with them i was doing all my editing like checking all the different versions and stuff with them so they were involved heavily but the amount of time i spent writing and then before and after every day of filming like there was a variety of just errands I had to do and uh, like picking up sound equipment and rentals and ret returning them. And then the editing process, I, I spent the, I mean, it was like nine months of work and, and, and I put in all that money and, it, and no one, I'll say this, no one, involved in that production gave me but like I, i'm in no way saying like oh they um uh were unhappy about money the opposite is is um um correct a lot of them didn't want to take money um but i i i was insistent upon it most of them were just like what you don't have to pay us and i was just like no because going back to what i said i was going to try and make money off of it so it was like yep yep i'm gonna pay you but it's just all these realities I learned where it's like, man, I'm putting, I'm the, <laughs> I, I have such a high workload and then I'm also burning all this money and it's just tough because it's like, I, I don't know. I think, I think there's something wrong with this formula where like, and I think the thing I realized was that I'm setting myself up for burnout you know? Yeah. Well, I think I you're, you're giving yourself a bad deal. I can't create uh, like I could be creating so much more stuff if the costs mm -hmm. were less and you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's yeah. what I think would be so much, uh, you know, people will disagree. Pe there are some people who will like stick their feet in the sand or whatever the term is and, um, or draw a line in the sand or whatever. <laughs> There are the people who are firm on like, no, nah, I got to get paid X amount of dollars. And like, that's their opinion and more power to them. But, um, but it's also like at this level where I'm at um, and a lot of the actors I work with are at, it's like all that mat like uh, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, doesn't really matter, but quality footage matters. Like having something that you're really proud of and I think that goes back to the start of this conversation where it's like, um, it's like, how do you, how do you make it the best it can be for your actors? And one thing I thought about after our last conversation was just um, like, I've seen the, I've, I've noticed the most um, positive response from actors with my material after they've either been a part of something successful with me or they've seen their friends have some sort of success with me. And it's like, like there's like some sort of proof, even though the, even though the stuff I've done to date is small. It's like they vouch like, for you. 
it's just like, oh, okay, this isn't going to be like a total waste of time is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's still, yeah, hey, you go. I, uh, <laughs> I just I actually was talking really, a lot. I, uh, I actually really do agree with something you said earlier. First of all, yeah, 100% you have to pay the crew. They're getting absolutely nothing out of it. I actually also thought about paying extras, like mm -hmm. who don't get any lines, but like not pay the actors. They get all the footage, but it looks super legit because there's extras and it looks like an actual scene. Mm -hmm. um, I was been like, yeah, extras get $20 a day. Everyone gets fed, but extras get $20. Uh, um, but as far as what you said uh, regarding, um, you know, 50 to 100 to $200, you have to think like some of these actors are have have are li living paycheck to paycheck and a, a days lost in uh, uh in wages at work could be pretty big it's like if i don't get money today i won't have enough for rent or food a hundred percent so i so i do kind of think like look if you were like how much would you have made today at your job and they would say mm -hmm. x amount it's like could i pay you that amount and you spend the whole day with me instead um yep. I think that could go a long way because then they're like, I'm not losing any money. I'm getting to act. I'm going to get footage. Um, and, and, and kind of going back to what you said earlier, like the only thing a, an actor should want is footage. I've got, I used to think that, especially start just starting out. I actually work with you because I was like, I need to flex my acting bone. I need to like get in front of camera and like, get those beats of like how to prepare like my moment before um you know just working all the acting chops that i trained for years ago and like get back into it like okay there's my eye line or you know action and being in the moment and reacting that's like one of the main reasons i worked with you uh a few weeks ago um plus like cool footage and 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 cool story um instagram photos so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> triple digit likes <laughs> so i'll say for me personally this is me not all actors I, i'm not gonna speak for all actors if the script is cool if i trust the producer if it's um if it's not gonna be footage i'm gonna be embarrassed about like i had friends who did like rape scenes and are completely Ugh. mortified that they did it and they're like they like changed their names on IMDb because they did not want the, that like to be associated with that after it came out. I was like, Whoa, what did I do? Yikes. That was such a bad I like choice for me. Um, so if there's something I'm not going to be embarrassed about, if it's a cool script, I, I like who I'm working with and I'm not losing on an insane amount of money uh, for the day. Um, I, I definitely would do that. Especially if I'm if like, I think what gets lost amongst <clears throat> actors is the, joy of acting like do you enjoy acting or do you want to just be famous and i like to think that i enjoy acting um and i think that will serve me longer especially with the very low success rate acting has i am so glad you said that because it made me want to amend <laughs> what i said <laughs> because um i in a way like you made me realize like i some of what i said i kind of actually hate in a way um you're allowed to take gonna, it back if you want or modify well it. <laughs> well here's what i'm saying is that um i think a hundred percent what you're saying is right number one has to be actually the act of doing it and that's something i try and think about um more and more where it's like how is it how do you make the the joy and the reason you're doing it be the actual act of doing it rather than just be like, Oh, this is just going to be a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I think what I was trying to say in a cold hearted way was the cold hard truth is like, that's why I know that's why a lot of actors will do small things. Like it's like, I need, cause when I was an actor, that's what it was. It was just like, I need real footage. And it's something that actors will say to me. And I actually kind of hate it when it's like, oh, that's the leading reason. Like, mm -hmm. like, shouldn't the leading reason be to do the, like, do something awesome and like yeah, see, yeah. see where it goes. But at the same time, I know that like, that is 
the like that's the currency like that's that's more important than the paycheck when you're at the indie level in my opinion yeah and yeah it, it, it our our conversation that we had before that we're now redoing um we what were we 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 were talking about something like this where it was um i don't know i don't even know what i'm saying but um but the second the, the other thing that you made me think of when it comes to how much people should get paid so i have i you made me think of a couple of things that i've been thinking of where i'm at, i'm at a place right now where i you know if i'm filming and if i'm doing something experimental like unfortunately i run the risk of having to redo stuff like our thing it's like you know there i made a few mistakes and we have to redo it same thing with the short film that um i was talking about the super eight one with johnny like we had to redo it because like uh, there was just a learning curve and with that stuff it's like <clears throat> i just can't afford <laughs> to set the price too high where it's like oh yeah oh, yeah like, I, cause I actually did a short film where it was after non-ec. I did a short film that I had to throw away in the garbage. And unfortunately the reason was because of money, because I committed to too high a price with the actors. Cause I was like, I was just, I mean, th the default when you used to be an actor is like, I'm going to pay as much as possible because like, otherwise I'm a bad guy kind of thing. And I have to get over that. But it was like an important lesson I learned because I committed to paying people a lot of money because I was like, we're gonna do this in one day or two, it was two days. Um, and it was just like, and then we'll be done. And then it, and then after the footage was shit, I was like, oh shit, I, um, I actually need to like quadruple the budget to get this thing yep. done right. And I cannot afford to do that. And so that thing just went away. And so that's why with Johnny, and Abby, with that one, I was like, you know, in the back of my mind, I knew I was going to be spending hundreds of dollars. And it was and it was kind of a for fun thing. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I'll buy you food. And uh, that was kind of my approach with the thing with you, where it was like, I mean, like you were saying, you're doing it for the reasons you stated. I'm doing it for similar reasons where it's like, I, like, in my mind, it was, I want to make something cool we can post on instagram that people it's just like one minute people see it and it's not like it doesn't lead to uh necessary it, uh, there's not necessarily anything attached to this short it's just like let's just something, something creative yep. and like i'll probably it's like i might mess it up and i did and so it's like that's the one level where i'm at right now but i do think that the the where you're talking about where it's people who need to take time off work, hundred percent think that your your thoughts on that are are what I agree with, and I think that it's tough because I don't think I don't think I'm at that level yet, and so I have to right now where I'm at where I'm still learning and growing. I have to just find people I can you know, where it's beneficial to both of us, like to do, yeah. do something where it's not that. And or like schedule it on a day where everyone's free. And then just like, exactly. Please block this day out. Like you cannot, exactly. you cannot plan anything else on this day because a lot of people are doing the same and you'll screw everyone else up. Um, exactly. That, I yeah. mean, that's what, that that's what I'll be doing for maybe some other stuff I got coming up where it's like, you know, a bigger commitment. And, and when I think of those that when I think of like 50 bucks or whatever, you know, the, the dollar amount I come up with is like, okay, if they're going to be here for a day, like, I don't want this to cost them anything. Like hopefully yeah. it's their day off work. Hopefully it's their day off work. So they, you know, it's not cutting into their income, but mm -hmm. you know, I want to cover their food. I want to, you know, maybe, have they'll have extra for a drink you know just like yep, yep. so it's not a negative in terms of dollars um mm -hmm. it's like you know they're safe on that level um yeah i mean these are these are the things that are tough and um but i do think that one thing I, so 
going back to the non-ec people, I remember I was talking to them because I mean, full disclosure, I was, <laughs> I talked, I talked to a lot of them and I was like, Hey, co- full transparency. I, I can't like, I want to keep this going. I can't, I can't afford to burn this money though. Like, it, yep. like at what point, like do I, if I lose 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, <laughs> at what point is it like stupid? And it's like, it benefits everyone to just have something out there. So um, without going into details, like people were, when I, when I brought up the topic about possibly continuing non-ec as a series and like asking people to take less, like it was, it was, you know, awkward and embarrassing to ask that, but like everyone was down because they're just like that. Uh, and there were some, and what you're saying about extras, cause I paid extras for non-ec and I would oh, want nice. to continue. Well, because they make it. I mean, like you imagine have like so many people flake. No one wants to be an extra. People were asking me like, oh, uh, how much are you going to pay me? Are you going to give me lines? Or, you know, it's there's so much BS that comes along yep. with it. Yep. And um, but I remember that was the other nice thing about the people involved in non ec Like if it continues, you know, I was I was trying to be very transparent just to let people know that I wasn't trying to do anything shady. And everyone I talked to was like, it was almost came to a point where people are like, John, you're talking just like I am now. They're just like, <laughs> you're talking too much. <laughs> they're just like, John, you, like, honestly, whatever you need to do, like the, we get it. Like just, yeah. if you can make it happen, like relax, you know? Yeah. I think um, they trust you. And I, maybe you, maybe you just don't trust yourself enough. Um, sometimes. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I think, I have a lot of paranoia about certain things and I need to let some, I think you're definitely a perfectionist. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, especially as you get older, like, do you feel this way? Like, do you have a heightened sense of like, you know, I I need to like get this shit together and like make this happen. And like, you know, it's different when you're, I don't know, maybe when you're first starting out, you, you, can screw around and drag your feet a bit more but now it's like oh i need to like i need to be professional i need to you know show up on time and i need to well yeah i mean all this together i think well, yeah if, if and when i get hired i think being a filmmaker is you have to be more of a perfectionist but i'm saying i meant it as a compliment like i think you're a perfectionist but a lot of times a perfectionist will just put off things because it's what is it's not going to be perfect you actually are going through with it and creating things um i i, I didn't mean it as a slight i promise you I, oh, I'm no. Saying it's no, awesome. I <laughs> no i don't um no i don't yeah me as a perfectionist uh you know i i don't think being on time is being perfect like i think that's just common decency um <laughs> I, yeah if i if and when i get hired i will put my best foot forward and and do, do the best that I can. I actually think I've, I've let things go a lot in the, in the last couple of years and it's been a lot be- more beneficial to me, you know, forgiving myself if I make a mistake or if I have a bad take, you know, in more an acting sense. Um, uh, just like, yeah, let's try it again. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited for my future in the creative world. Uh, and I think letting go of being a perfectionist has helped. Well, and, um, touching on that, cause, um, just to restate it, you like you're up in the um, <laughs> the entertainment capital of the world right now, Sacramento, <laughs> California. But sure uh, when you move back to LA um, in what eight months ish? Eight months. Yeah. So summer 2023, I believe. Am I correct? The priority is going to be acting, and second will be stand up comedy. Yeah, um, stand-up comedy will be, you know, something that I can control and just do. And it's mainly might be just, even just for the writing of it. Um, but yeah, getting on stage is, is I think, beneficial. Um, yeah, not improv, but, you know, it's, I honestly, it's, it's fun when I actually do it. Um, I, I just have to, you know, get over myself and do it. But acting will be the, uh, at the forefront. I'll be looking for getting footage, uh, submitting to agencies, probably more like co-star agencies, um, which they do have. And that'll be, you know, kind of like what we were talking about, building 
yeah, uh, getting footage as as a co star, a one liner, uh, you know, no name as a as a credit, like paramedic or something, not like a name name. <laughs> um, hey, so yeah, that, that'll be my uh, <laughs> my plan. What, what will your one line be? Just stop. <laughs> Uh, hello, sir. Uh, your table's this way. <laughs> You'll be like, how am I going to say this? Gosh, I could do it a million ways. <laughs> it's like, hello, sir. Yeah. Your table is this way. <laughs> <laughs> Such hey, bad acting. <laughs> by the way, have, have, um, do you know this thing about um, Pulp Fiction, the coffee shop owner part? Yeah, you know, yeah. I am a coffee like, shop. He says, "I'm just a coffee shop." Instead of "I'm just a coffee shop owner," and then they put him in the credits as a coffee, a coffee as shop. Coffee shop. Yeah, so good. Um, Sorry, one last thing before you... we can I say, say one thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of of Pulp Fiction, Quentin Tarantino got super lucky with his Reservoir Dogs. First of all, it was a great script. Um, second of all, he got a really famous actor to work. I think for free, he got a. Uh, who Whoa, plays Mr. Har- Mr. Harvey Keitel? He, I think he did it for free or for super cheap. Um, so you, again, you just have to get lucky with these with these kind of things. Um, for you know your first, I think he may have even financed it, but you know, well, and I think he, one of he um as as I understand it, first of all, he definitely got lucky. Me or I don't know if it, luck is such a <laughs> one thing that went well was having Lawrence Bender, his producer, because, uh-huh. I mean, if if Quentin Tarantino made it the way he envisioned it, it would have been like a $5,000 16-millimeter film. And without the, you know, cinematographer, the all the electricians, the higher quality actors, the sound team and stuff, like, it would definitely not have gotten the same response right because it wouldn't have been a it wouldn't have looked it it would have it wouldn't have looked or sounded nearly as good and the acting would not have been as good or whatever like so Mm -hmm. a lot went. i think lawrence bender helped but also harvey keitel he uh he he was involved as a producer basically so maybe that's what he did maybe he just maybe he just said oh i'll put it together and I'll take some back end or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, and and um, and, what, and yeah, and one of one of Quentin Tarantino's advice to like young actors is like write a Reservoir Dogs, write an amazing script. Yeah. So <laughs> just do that, John. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, and that's I say that because I, I you know that's like the common thought is because there is a lot of truth to like write a script that has as few characters and locations as possible like there is a lot of truth to that but i think the thing that goes unnoticed in that story is just like he he had people who helped him who were awesome like he got the right people to um make his vision become a reality um but i wanted to ask you something about you so it And sorry, I'm like coughing a little bit. Um, um, like if you're when it comes to stand up comedy and improv, what's the percentage? What's the ratio of how you usually spend your time when you're living in LA? Oh gosh, I, I probably went on stage maybe once a month. Um, and writing, I I never I could never be a, a sit down and just write something it it would always come to me like in the shower or as I'm driving and then I'm like all right let me flush that out and I would talk it over with my wife it's like is this funny is there something here <laughs> and then you know and then honestly I'll, I'll be like saying it out loud and then in that moment I'll think of a good punchline and I was like oh wow that worked um it's a very fun um process and it's there's nothing like it and i'm not even saying i'm that good um uh, but it is uh fulfilling uh and yeah. it's something i i as an actor you can control because a lot of times you're just waiting and trying and trying until you finally you get something and are able to work on something wait but are you doing and, and a way to stay improv relevant. are you doing improv, improv? no 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 i that. i oh i did not 
I did not enjoy my time doing improv. Um, oh, okay. A lot of uh, I, I, I like being more in control of what happened. Yeah. It was a little too anxiety ridden um, <laughs> <laughs> in front of actual people and uh, do something funny. They haven't laughed in two minutes. <laughs> Is Because uh, I haven't done improv in half a lifetime. Um, is it with those classes and, um, you know, UCB and groundlings or whatever, is it generally a pretty supportive space? Are there like, how often are people competing for attention versus like actually kind of doing what's best for the, that sketch? I'd say it's pretty supportive. Oh, good. Uh, you gotta if you, you just gotta stay with it for for many I'd say years to actually yeah. and a lot of times improv teams you know form and then they break up and then uh, because people quit acting or they're like oh, I want to be a part of this team their the vibe is not right um, but generally you know you know if if we're all up there and only one of us gets one laugh over a four minute uh, stage time. I think we're all feeling really awful. <laughs> it's like, but if, if I don't get a laugh, but other people are laughing, should I take it as a win. Um, I honestly took it. It, it, really, it did help me those classes as far as like listening to someone and, and reacting versus like yeah. waiting to say your line. So I, I would recommend anyone, honestly, there were like lawyers taking that class. Um, to, uh, oh yeah. Just to, um, to, uh, uh, it, it would help in anything. I feel like a lot of people don't even know how to talk to like uh, <laughs> strangers, and I feel like it could help, um, like how to order a coffee at the at Starbucks. Yeah. I agree. Um, I always, always thought people should more people should do it, like corporate people, for sure. And I think they do have corporate improv, like uh, you know, uh, events that corporate yeah. funds. But anyway. Um, well, cool. I'm excited for when you get back down there and, um, cause I've still have yet to see you do stand up live. So that'll be fun. It definitely will. And, um, you made me think of something. Oh, you're just, you're just, when you were talking about the classes, it was giving me flashbacks to, I mean, I never, I never took those classes. Um, I took, I did improv like a little bit in college, but maybe just sort of like the theater game type stuff you would do in a normal acting class. And every now and then they would devote some time to improv. Um, but I, I just remember sometimes there would be people probably more at that beginner level. Every now and then you get, you get someone who thinks that they are just so much smarter than everyone else. They're like, like, yeah, this is that, that false sense of confidence where they're like, Oh, I've watched a bunch of improv. I know how this goes. And they, they, and they don't listen to anyone. It's like they're yeah. living in their own reality. I just, that was part of why I asked, but the more I thought of it. No, that I is the reason why I did get out of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, people just go off on their, they go rogue and it's like, dude, I just wasted a whole hour of practice here. <laughs> like, yeah. What are we doing now? Uh, and I just didn't just feel like, so empty afterwards um but i do yeah. i do know that like the few times that i've seen I, what i would consider professional improvers um like whether it's one of those groundlings or ucb um shows or there's some other stuff that i've seen um usually the better people get it seems like the more in tune they are with how to be supportive of that sketch rather than like you don't have you don't have people taking over quite like dude it's like honestly, it's honestly it's like professional wrestling like if someone like like WWF like you yeah. need to make them look good and then you you get to shine and it's like yeah. if, if someone's just like beating and just it's boring after a while if if someone's trying to just be the star um uh, I actually know some people who in my acting class who went on to who are in like the the wrestling world uh, it's very it's very theatrical and and there's a lot of uh, uh, parallels, but uh, hey, 
I actually have to get going. Yeah. No, thank you for, um, thanks for doing this. And I'm glad we got to talk about this stuff, especially the money stuff, because it's, I don't know, it's such an awkward topic. And it, it's like, it always just feels gross sometimes, not always, but sometimes it feels gross. But at the same time, it's like incredibly in, uh, uh, essential to talk about because, you know, people want to get it right. People want it to be done ethically and um, not get in the way of good stuff. So I appreciate that conversation. That's, that's why we have agents and studio heads at the higher levels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Then then we don't have to think about it when we get hired. Yeah, up. exactly. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'll talk to you later. Hey, man, good talking. Thanks.